All right, folks, thanks for tuning in to Solve, Fix, Build. Today, we're going to get started on installing the serpentine belts for our fully custom supercharger setup with the Rotrex on a small block Chevy with an air to water intercooler setup and fuel injection. Let's get started. Okay, this was the original LS version. That was my first prototype. So you can see it moved it out a little bit and my groove cut was pretty cheesy. I needed to widen that a little bit and move the whole thing down. So here's the third, my, well, my second prototype. I'm putting more curves in it, trying to make it look a little bit more organic. I've made the groove a little better, but it's still not perfect and it still needs to get widened out a bit. like some weird little goblin face. He's happy though. <laughs> so I test fit the uh, elbow here and it's like barely above the control arm with this suspension loaded i just it's gonna move quite a bit i don't know if i can clock this you can't even like rotate this pulley by accident it'll destroy the internals of this thing so i gotta be really careful i'm very interested in getting an air to water intercooler because then i can mount the heat exchanger in here tuck it in there and it's like super sleek and out of the way and then have the water reservoir like here the exchanger here Uh, I'm looking through my old videos. It has been six years since I put all this on and I pressed, pressed with the BFH, the crank snout pulley on there. And I don't even remember if it had a key in it or not because I need to make sure the engine's at top dead center. And then I need to install a pointer gauge here. This is a 1961 283 block. At some point they started threading the ends of the crankshaft. So the crankshaft snout down here would normally be threaded. Mine's not. But to get that on, you have to basically hammer it on. There's no other way. What's the appropriate spacing here? Somebody gave some guidance of three inches from the face of the block right there at the timing cover to the end of the harmonic balancer. I'm telling you that that flange isn't going to go any further. And I'm not going to hit it anymore. I don't want to. If you're fully bolted on, you're almost flush against this surface. If I measure again to the block face where the timing cover is touching the block, now to the very, very front of the flange, it's three inches.
Okay, you can see in a YouTube Shorts video that I found Top Dead Center with a uh, Top Dead Center whistle. This uh, little product is pretty cool. Threads right into the spark plug hole. And I put it in the number one cylinder, which on a small block Chevy is right here. And then you rotate the crank. And I used a adapter because it's an adapter for putting a wrench on with uh, so you could rotate the crank. Anyway, we just needed to get it back to top dead center. And the important thing is you got to get it on top dead center on the compression stroke of ignition, not on the compression stroke of exhaust. And that's what the whistle's for. The reason why the whistle works is that the only way for the air to come out would be the spark plug hole because the valves are closed. And prove that, I'm at top dead center right now, and these rockers are loose. If they're not, that would mean that the push rod is coming up and it's in the middle of compressing the, the beehive spring for the valve. And this needle can be adjusted. You can loosen, and loosen these two screws here and I can move it this way to, to fine tune it. If I just put it on there as is, lined up with top dead center and guess what? All these bolts line right up. Nice, you know, this is great. I got all the bolts for the super damper on and now it's time to put these on with the pulley. And once that's done, I will have my zero reference plane for everything, for the supercharger. And then I could start finalizing the spacers on all these brackets, which means the whole serpentine belt system can come together now. And this has been something that's been in the making for a long time. So this uh, pulley is something I had custom made uh, to be a specific diameter for what I calculated the supercharger pulley ratio uh, requirements. And then I also needed something in that diameter that had two tracks, two independent circuits. And since I took the water pump off of any mechanical circuits by making it electric, I'm able to isolate the supercharger circuit. So theoretically, I could run this engine without boost. If something went wrong with the supercharger, I could still drive home, theoretically. I got my fingerprints all over them, but these are real nice. I found them on eBay. So by some miracle, I have some spacers from other kits. And that appears to be the perfect dimension to space this bracket off the block. The, the most proud mounting face is down here near the base of the block. So these spacers appear to be 0.875 inches. I have these studs that I made that I used to position everything. I'm gonna get them out. So you can see here, look at this bracket for the alternator. If I wanted to go all the way to the block, obviously I'd hit the edge of the water pump and that's no good, but it's not going to do that. I need to space this out. Okay, something I found on Amazon is if you search aluminum spacer stock, you get all kinds of options, including ones that have 3 8 inch inner diameter. And you can get them in various lengths. So this, this here is pretty freaking fantastic. The thing is super rigid on here. Now that this pulley is securely mounted where it's going to be and the balancer is set, all these are fixed in position. Now I can just take a straight edge. I am four and five eighths inches from the face of this to the face of that. All right, so here's the calculations. This plate is exactly a half inch thick. And I said four and five eighths. So that means that I have four and an eighth spacing to get this to the front of the pulley. But then the pulley itself is about an eighth off the plate. And then the pulley is about one inch wide on the track. I could take an eighth off. That gets me down to four and a half, and I can take another inch off. That gets me down to three and a half. So I need a three and a half inch spacer, which sucks because I just ordered the biggest one I ordered was two inches. So, bruh. I'll put the supercharger on the innermost circuit, and I'll put the alternator and power steering pump on the outermost circuit. The reason why is uh, the alternator actually. You know, sticks quite a bit out here. 
So the only trick will be how to space out the power steering pump to make sure that those pulleys align. All right, that's better. So I found a piece of aluminum L bracket, nice and straight. Got it clamped here to the very front of the pulley and I did a measurement sorry, from the back face of this piece of aluminum stock, which is the very, very front of the pulley to the inside of the innermost circuit is almost exactly two inches. So what that means is up here at the supercharger, it needs to be two inches from here to there. So let's see where we are. Is it two inches? No, it's two and a half inches. I'm a half inch off. Let's look at these spacers. The spacers are one and a half inches. I think I have some two inch spacers. If that's the case, then I put some two inch spacers on here and I will be exactly aligned. But let's check. I happen to have some two inch spacers. Like we are there kiddos. Holy crap, did I look out by some miracle. These little spacers back here just happen to be the exact correct depth for making the block of the, the small block Chevy flush. And that's, then I had a half inch plate back here and then a two inch spacer. And then this plate, which I just happened to machine kind of arbitrarily at some depth to recess the supercharger in. I used two pre-made spacers and voila. Two inches on this idler, so this idler is perfect, which is astounding. I have like some random spacer under that. This is the final mounting position for the supercharger. Final. 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 Woo! Yeah. I've been working on that for years. I'm five and an eighth away from the face of this head. The alternator itself is about six inches from the front of the pulley, like the front face of the pulley all the way to the back of the unit. So I can't hit any of this stuff. So it needs to be floating, you know, kind of somewhere here. I'm relying on this turnbuckle, do all the tensioning for this circuit. I'm just gonna arbitrarily kind of put these, these like three quarter inch spacers on here just to kind of see where we end up. Turnbuckle go here, I think. Okay, so here's something pretty remarkable. So these spacers are just standard sizes. I, I haven't modified them at all. I'm just seeing how close I can get. So you can see that um, this is my straight edge. It's aligned with the front of the pulley. And you can see I've got a little bit of overlap here. I'm off by maybe an eighth or a quarter of an inch or so. You got everything just finger tight here. And I've got this bracket I made that's just standing a little proud of the block. So, you know, I need to take some more measurements and just see like if this thing is cockeyed at all, but like this is totally viable. And then uh, the last thing to do once that's set is align the power steering pump. So you might recall on this power steering pump that I machined a steel bracket. And the reason why I used a steel bracket was because the only way I could really see this working was that the, the bracket needed to be threaded and then the bolts would go directly into the bracket. I don't remember why I did that, but that's what I did. So this would go down here. Yeah, that's, that's what it would roughly look like. And so I might be able to use those little half inch spacers again. Yeah, look at that. You can kind of see, it's just a miracle how this is all working. So this is pretty wild. Just using the basic spacers. I've caught everything like really, really close that the power steering pump lined up almost perfectly. You can see I'm flat against the crank pulley. Power swing pumps, dead on. So that's pretty freaking great. Okay, so the next thing I need is this idler. I need it to come 
you know, basically if this pulley is about an inch wide, I need it to come out two and three quarter inches. Just about did it. I could probably go just a hair in, you know, maybe sixteenth, maybe sixteenth of an inch in, but I don't want to go any thinner over here. So I'm gonna call that done. And I sanded a bit right here. So it was just barely touching the alternator body. So I just did that on the belt sander there and rounded it off. I'm going to do everything with button head Allen screws, all stainless, all 3.8-16 hardware. So everything is going to look like that. Coolant will come from this thing and go to the radiator. Then come back out, I think down the bottom of the water pump here. And then... Yeah, so that's going to be a pain in the ass to work on because that's underneath there. Holy shit, I didn't think about that. Oh, no. I'm going to belt run in here, dude. Crap. Well, that's going to be a problem. Shit. She's looking pretty good, though. I mean, I've, I got these... Uh, yeah, I still don't know how to pronounce these wheels. I love these wheels. These are like my favorite wheels in the world. These are FM5s from Fix or Fixie. I guess you would say Fixie. I think it's Fixie. These black center caps, when I put them in, I was like, eh, I don't know. I've had the aluminum ones forever, but they've gotten kind of dinged up because they've been literally sitting here on my toolbox for like years so if i got them used a long time ago they were on my old volkswagen so i kept them for this because an impala ss has five spoke wheels and i wanted to stick with that but i also wanted something that was i could put a lip on so i got new lips for these a while back and i had them mounted but i think this car is looking really good right now i could stare at this engine for hours i just you know i I like how the supercharger brackets worked out. I'm pretty happy with those. So I'm pretty upset with myself because these holes are off just a little bit. It's because I did these by hand. These were CNC'd. Not the best, uh, just widened the hole here. Finally getting these guys to a close to finished state. Got the right length of bolts now. These, uh, Lock nuts I'm using are pretty cool. These are for aircraft. 
So instead of using nylon lug nuts, which I don't think would be bad, and you can use stainless nylon lock nuts too, but these are meant for aircraft. You see, they've got basically like a little built-in washer with a bunch of little, bunch of little teeth that uh, act kind of like a lock washer. This whole radiator support for the Impala is huge. I mean, if you look at it, it's kind of insane. It's just a huge air dam. It's just a big flat surface that you're pushing through the air. It makes this vehicle pretty poor on aerodynamics, but what it does do is it filters all the air, shoves all the air through the radiator to keep it cool. So this is what I'm talking about in here. There's quite a bit of space. Boy, I just don't know if I'm gonna have enough space so the trick with these things is not to hurt them i've already dinged this up a little bit it was already dinged up when i bought it it was kind of discounted because it was blemished but i uh, smashed my knuckles into it right there which is lots of fun i really should just tape some cardboard over this to fix that but anyway this will this looks like it'll fit probably but i'm gonna have to take all this off. It's a good looking piece of kit. I got some work to do in here or around the wheel well. And what I'm gonna try to do is instead of using the stock fenders, I've got some fender arches that are meant for like a trailer. I might just try to work those in somehow. I wanted to minimize the number of bends. No matter what, it's gonna to have to come around and then in. So it hadn't occurred to me that I could just remove the radiator and then try to fit this in there first. So that's what I did. It kind of fits. It's uh, it's really close here to the hood mechanism. It's the power steering bracket. It's the road trucks output it's a two and a half inch od two inch id it's two and three quarters on the id almost three inches on the od maybe the intercooler is three inches on the od maybe a little more three and an eighth 
Got some good shit. And they're cool vibing. Oh, I'm excited. Well, uh, I think this might introduce some hood clearance issues. It looks cool, but it's like, look how tall that is. Let me get the old straight edge. Yeah. This isn't perfect, but it uh, kind of depicts where the hood line is. I could gain an inch, but I really want that spacer in there because I want it. I don't want to overheat this thing. I mean, I would, <laughs> it's kind of silly now. I was worried about clearance here for the uh, coolant lines. That wouldn't be a problem. So I took apart the whole uh hood latch mechanism so this went here so i need to cut this out or just make a new bracket the hood latch mechanism is pretty much all one piece this these are all riveted in and the handle is in the way so this handle here is, is interfering with the intercooler So in addition to the intercooler itself, there's a few things that need to be mounted. This is a remote filling reservoir for the intercooler system. This is the pump for the intercooler system. And then these items are for the supercharger. This is the reservoir for the supercharger oil. And this is a filter. So the intercooler is actually quite bulky. I mean, if I put it here like this, then maybe I make it flatter. All right, so I use this piece of wood to mock up a bracket I might build here for the intercooler. Okay, so I got a second intercooler option. I measured and it didn't seem like it was gonna be this small, but looking at it, it's like tiny compared to that one. All right. So this will work super pretty well. Or like that. So I went back to Frozen Boost and looked at their website again. They use this intercooler in their 350 horsepower kit and they use this intercooler in their 600 horsepower kit. If you want a right angle intercooler for the 600 horsepower kit, it's got a core that's that size. So I got the wrong one. I got the smaller one for their smaller kit. So basically what I probably need to do is return both of these to Frozen Boost and exchange them for the bigger version of this.
so this belt's short anyway, but uh, look at this. It, it interferes with the water pump housing, which I was worried about. I was thinking that the tensioner would take care of that because I would move this down. But it also interferes with this water discharge pipe. So I need a new water pump solution and a longer belt or both. This is the pump, it's remote. So it's either gonna go here or down there somewhere. So this sticks out a little far. This is the tensioner on the supercharger. I was thinking about taking this off and machining a little bit off of it. Get a few passes in the old Harbor Freight mini mill. And here's the new water pump. Now this came from Jags. This is a remote mount water pump. I guess I thought that the in and out would be mounted in the front. It's kind of odd. Here's one. The other's in the back. So that's weird. Is like this meant to be mounted on a wall and like it's like a through bulkhead? Because you see the mounting screws here too. Like it looks like it's supposed to be mounted through something. All right, I just packaged and sent off my intercoolers back to Frozen Boost, and I bought a larger right angle core for here. And if they honor my exchange, then I'll get some money back on that, which will be great. So now I'm just sorting through. I've kept messing with this over last weekend, and I want to get back to it. I created this C channel bar. I think I'm going to scrap it. The uh, Heat exchanger will be best positioned as low as possible here. I was trying to move it up too high by putting it into these mounting holes and it's just getting in the way of the hood latch. So it needs to be about where it is. All right, so I got a different fitting and no matter which way I spin that, it's still interfering with the belts. The whole point of this was to not, is to get the water pump out of the way. But it's like, no matter what you do, things are gonna stick off the block at least like three inches. So these, these need to be rooted over here. So let's assume I can like have some, maybe I'll have to make another bracket or something to hold it so it stays out of the path of the belt, but I could bring them here and then along the frame and then over to the radiator. I could change, I could increase wrap by moving this pulley to this hole. Preferably, I don't want to modify any of this. Well, that worked. My father-in-law had these V blocks So I'm just putting it in the press and trying that. I 
that's not bad. I was not planning on doing it this way, but this, holy shit, I think this is totally working. So here's my little wire template. That's got a lot of spring back in it. It didn't, uh, it sprung back a little after I bent it. That's interesting. Wow, that's really springing back on me. There we go, that's not terrible. This is fun. I'm enjoying this. Dude, that is awesome. We're pleased with that. It worked way better than I expected. Probably need to do a little cleanup on this bend, but let's see. It didn't do much. It really has a lot of spring back. He's a good dog. Yeah. So, uh, I got these, uh, this thing bent. This was the original bracket I was trying to make, and hopefully yeah, I can make it all work. Uh, these are the holes for the heat exchanger. So that'll go on those little tabs. And then I tried to line up these. I had, I had notched this one and like kind of made it a sliding hole. And I have two options over here. One is kind of on the far end of the radiator opening. This is the actual radiator screw hole. This one, I think, went to a battery box or something. So I can barely fit both of those in there. This is a little close to the edge. If I oversize these the holes a little bit, it'll have a little bit of adjustability.
full full movement of the hood latch. There's no interference here. It's shifted a bit this way. It looks like I've got enough clearance to connect up my hoses. So I could put hoses through here and then maybe feed them through the firewall here or through this radiator support. And one thing that's gonna be a little tricky is this sticks out too far. So I'll put a spacer there. So I'll end with uh, this thought. Um, I'll end with this thought. I was thinking maybe I could swap the pulley out with a ribbed pulley and just crank it up this way. Let's say I could get it like this and then I could put tension on the belt by cranking it in this direction rather than in that direction. If the belt were a little longer, I could be up here you know, well above that fitting and just have a longer belt and I wouldn't have to change anything. And then I'd be well out of the way here. And that's all possible because what used to be the water pump was like here in the center and it was just in the way of everything. All right, thanks for tuning into that. I hope that you enjoyed this. It was a longer video than normal, but it's because we had a lot of things to show you. So uh, we're gonna get into some fixing of the water pump issues in the next video. I think I have a solution. There's some NPT fittings, NPT adapters that can be bolted up to the block. And I think I'll be able to thread those in and save a few inches, which will get me out of the belt clearance issue. Also, instead of using the bulky inlet on the EFI, I found a low profile one. So I think this will work pretty well. And then this is the new right angle intercooler, which we will install here in the next video. So if you like these videos, feel free to subscribe. That's completely up to you. I certainly appreciate it. It helps me build more stuff. So tune in next time. I'll see you next time. This is David Hill with Solve Fix Build.